Hello and welcome to video number eight. And in this video, we will learn how to create a research paper. And you might be thinking, oh, those research papers are just stressful to write. But once you learn how to write them, it will be fun since you will have all the knowledge and skills you will need to write the paper. Here are the topics that you will learn in this video. I have listed them here. And I also have a picture of our first and last page of our finished research paper. So let me close this so that we can get started with writing our paper. Alt F4 to close this. Before I get to our start file, let's first take a look at our notes here. These notes have been provided to you in our class website. We do have different styles, but for college research papers, the most commonly used ones are the MLA and APA, and I have listed that here. I have also provided to you here a link to O at Purdue, which gives you excellent guidance for writing resources and citations. On our notes here are rules for MLA style, and we will follow this as we create our research paper. I will now close this, Alt F4 to close this. Here is our start file. I have it all typed. This is also provided to you in our class website. So please download this and save in our class folder as this is what we will use to create our research paper. Since I have Word window open, to open a new Word document, I will use the keyboard shortcuts, Control N to open a new blank Word document. And here we have a new blank Word document open. So now we can start creating our research paper. And before we do that, I will first save this file, F12 to save this. I'm making sure that I'm saving this in our system of folders. So I will scroll down and get to my USB and then scroll down to look for our class folder, expand, expand that and then expand that. And here I have the word folder for our class. So I will click on that. And you can see the files that we have created. All those are for previous videos. And I believe you all have these files. So I will save this as research paper finished file and enter. So now we have saved our file. We can start creating our research paper. Let's come to our ribbon right here and click on the references tab. The references tab include the options that will help you create a research paper. And if you can see right here, this is the citations and bibliography group. And if I click this button here, insert citation, if I click on that, this is what we will use to insert our citation. So if we are adding new source, we will click on here, add new source. And right here, if I click on manage sources, this is where once we have all our citations will be. So I will close that. Right here is where we'll come to change our style. You can see right here it's on APA. So if I click on that arrow, you see we have different styles right there. But as I said, the most commonly used ones in college are APA and MLA. So I will click MLA to set our research paper to MLA style. After we create our citations, we will use the bibliography button here to create our bibliography list. A bibliography list is a list of all the sources mentioned in your citations. And for our MLA paper, we will use the work cited list. For this paper too, we will insert a footnote and this is where we will come to insert our footnote and we will see that when we start creating the paper. The next thing that I would like to set is our margins. And uh, for MLA style, we know from our notes that we need one inch margin. So I will use the keyboard shortcut Alt PSP to open the page setup dialog box. And I have that open. I'll make sure my margins are all set to one inch. And I see that's correct. So I will click OK. The other thing that I would like to do is to set our paragraph spacing and our line spacing to double. So I will click right here where my insertion point is at the beginning of my document. And because this is our paragraph level formatting, it will carry on to the entire document. So I will right click and from a drop down menu, I will click on paragraph and I can see my paragraph dialog box is open here. So I'm changing the paragraph spacing to zero and I'm changing the line spacing to double. And this will apply to the entire document. So I will click OK. Now, before we insert our header, Let's make sure we first turn on the non-printing characters, Control shift asterisk. And another thing that we need to make sure is that we set our 
font size to 12. So I'm coming right here to my ribbon and click on font size right there. Click on 12. I will also change our font style to Times New Roman and that will apply to our entire document. So as I said, the MLA style requires you to have your last name followed by the page number in the upper right corner of each page. But you can omit that from the first page if your instructor asks you to do that or if you don't want to include it. To put the margins in edit mode and insert the header, it's easy to do that. I will just double click up here on the margins and that opens the header and footer design type right here. So you can see that we have different groups on this tab right here. And also if at any time you would like to close your header or your footer and go back to the document, you can either use that X mark right there to close header and footer, or you can also press escape and that will ensure you're back to your document and you can start typing your document. So let's open our header one more time because we would like to insert uh, your last name in the page number. So to do that, you can see right here as I hover my mouse, if you look closely, you can see my mouse has an icon. That icon is to left align if i bring my mouse here at the center you notice here too that my mouse has an icon and that is for center alignment and if i bring it right here to the right side if i hover and if you look at that closely you can also see there that we have the right alignment so to do that you can either double click right there and then once you start typing your name that will be right aligned if you need to center you can either bring your mouse right there and double click that and that will center your header but for us since we know how to use uh, the keyboard shortcut we can use Control r and that will bring us to the right side of our margin so right here we will need to type your last name so you type your last name here what your last name is type it there followed by space and now we would like to add a page number right there so what i do not want you to do I do not want you to type one right there because if you do on every page on your document will have your last name and then the page number will be one and I'll show you what I mean by that so I will escape to get out of the header and then I will control enter so that we can add another page and you can see right here on the second page it still shows one it shows here page number one and if I control enter again, go to the third page, the same thing right there, it shows page number one. So that's why you do not want to type your page number right there. So I will control Z to undo that, control Z to undo that. And I will double click again to open our header. What you would need to do when you're inserting your page numbers, you need to use uh, this page number right here, header and footer group. So if you click on that and then uh, select current position and then from the current position you select plain number click on that and you can see that inserts the page number right here so the good thing about this is that for every page that you add to your document the page number will update automatically so if we add the second page to our document so i'll escape to close the header and control enter to add another page you can see the difference right here we have page number two control enter and right here we have page number three so that's why it's really important for you to use the page number right here to insert your page number so i will control z to undo that and i will press escape to close my header and now we have inserted our header so the other thing that I would like to show you, even though it is not required for MLA style, is to add or to insert a footer to your document. And I will scroll down to the end of my document. And again, to open my footer, I will double click at the bottom margin and that will open my footer. And again, once I hover that, you can see the icon on my mouse and you can see my icon on the right side too, if I hover my mouse right there. So if you were to insert 
a footer if you were to insert page numbers on your footer so for example you would like to add page numbers at the center of your footer you can do that so i will control e to put that at the center and then i'll come up here to my header and footer group and i will click on page number and I will click on current position and this time because I would like to have page number of how many pages I have because we will have several pages in our research paper so I would like every page number to show page of page number so I will click page X of Y to insert that and you can see that is left aligned so once we insert that, I'm not sure whether it will left align or it will center, but let's click that and see. And there you go. Even though it was left aligned, because when we inserted our page number right there, we selected current position. So if you select current position, and if you scroll down and you choose the type of page number that you would like, it will insert the page number in the current position where your cursor is. So I'll escape that. We have our page number of how many pages we have. And if I escape to close the footer, and if I control enter to go to my second page, you can see we have one of two here. This is the first page. And if I scroll to my second page, that's my second page, I can see I have page two of two. And if I control enter for that page, now you can see on my second page here, it says page two of three. And if I scroll to the end of my page three, I can see right here, I have page three of three. Again, the footer is not a requirement for the MLA style, but we're just inserting that because as we create our research paper, we would like to see we are on what page and of how many pages. So I will control Z to undo all those pages that I have inserted and I'll come back here to my first page and we will start typing our research paper right here. So for an MLA research paper, you're not required to have a title page. So here at the upper left corner of the first page, we will start by typing your name, the instructor's name, the course number and the date. So right here where you see my paragraph mark right there type your own full name so your first name and your last name then enter and then type the instructor's name we will type professor monica then enter our course number is english 245 enter uh, instead of typing the date we will insert our date and we will use the keyboard shortcut alt and d and now when inserting the date just be sure you're not choosing the format of the month that is abbreviated. Choose any other format as long as the month is not abbreviated. So I will choose that format right there. And again, I'm making sure I don't have the update automatically box checked. So I will click OK. And now I have my date inserted there. So I will enter as I would like to type the title of our research paper. And I will type manufacturing alternate powered vehicles and before i enter for my title this is supposed to be centered and also i don't need to add any other formatting to this i don't need to bold and i don't need to italicize that i just need to center and because centering is a paragraph level formatting i can either come here on my ribbon on the home tab and click on center right there or i can use the keyboard shortcut Control e and that will center our title. So I will now enter. And you see this has carried forward to the next paragraph. But we do not need all the other parts of our research paper centered. So we have to change this alignment. So I will right click on that. And then click on paragraph from the drop down menu. And then right here I will change the alignment to left. And right here on the indentation. I'm not changing anything. I'm leaving the left and right to zero. But on the special indentation, I'm clicking on that box, click on that arrow, and I'm changing the first line indentation only. So I will click on that, making sure all the other spacing is zero and the line spacing is still a double. And I can see my preview right here. I have only indented the first line. 
So I will click OK. And I can see right here, my paragraph mark is right here. And I can see from my ruler, I have the 0 0.5 inch mark there of my indentation. So right here, I will go get everything that I have typed on our start file. And I will copy that and paste that right here. So I will minimize this and open our start file. And here is our start file. So I will copy all these that I have typed here to our finished file. So I will make sure that I bring my cursor right here at the beginning of this uh, first paragraph here. And I will control shift and I have selected everything there. So control C to copy that. And then I'll come here to my taskbar and I'll restore the research paper finished file. And then from here, I can either use control V to paste all that here and then use my smart tag to paste only the text. Or I can right click right here and I see my paste options right here. So I will click to select keep text only. And just like that, I see I have pasted all that information that I had typed earlier into our research paper. And I'm scrolling up page by page to make sure that I have all double spacing. And I see I have all double spacing on my research paper. Now, before we insert our citations, we will first learn how to autocorrect words in your document. We'll also learn how to find and replace words in your documents and also apply and edit heading styles. We will start with the autocorrect feature. And here on the first paragraph, on the first line, where I have the APVS typed here, I would like Word to be able to correct for me. If I type APV, I want Word to autocorrect that to alternate powered vehicles. So I'll show you how to do that. If you come up here on your ribbon, and you click on file tab and then scroll down and click on options and then it opens for you the word options dialog box so click on proofing and then right here we have the autocorrect options and you see the explanations here it change how word corrects and formats text as you type so this is exactly what we want so i will click autocorrect options right there and right here, you see we have the option for replace with. So, and it have the box checked here, replace text as you type. This is what we want. So, right here on the replace box, I will type APV. And I would like to replace that with alternate powered vehicles. I also want the abbreviations to be added. APVS. And then close parenthesis. So now anytime I type APV on this Word document or on my Word document, it will change that to alternate powered vehicles APVS. So I will add that and I will click OK and I will click OK. So now I will come up here back to my first line here and I would like to delete all that APVS and APV. I will delete that. And now you will watch once I type APV here. So APV space. You see Word has corrected that for me. And it has typed for me alternate powered vehicles APVS in parentheses. I have an extra space here. I will delete that. So that's the way you use the autocorrect feature. So the other thing that I would like to show you is how to find and replace. If you only want to navigate through your document, you can use the keyboard shortcut Control F and that opens for you the navigation pane. And you can see right here, I have alternate powered vehicles. And what this does, I can see all the words that are in this document have been highlighted in yellow. So all the words that I have typed here will show up here in my document being highlighted in yellow and I can navigate to see all those words. And I would like to make any changes to any of them. It's easy to just come up there and uh, click on it and make the changes. And you can also open the navigation pane using the find button up here. So if I close this, I will close that. And I can come up here on my ribbon on the home tab. And if I click on the find button here, 
if I click on that arrow and if I click find, it still opens for me the navigation pane right here. So the keyboard for find is control F. So the other way you can do that, let me close that. I'm going to come back here and click on that and I will click advanced find. So the advanced find, it helps you to find the words that you would like to search for in your document. And then you can click on replace and then you'll be able to replace those words right here. The other way you can do that, I will escape to cancel that, is click on the replace button right here. So if I click replace or I can use the keyboard shortcut control H and that still opens for you the find and replace dialog box. But you can see right here, you'll be able to find the words that you want to, and you'll also be able to replace that here. So if I click on find, I would like to find alternate powered vehicles. So I can find all those words in this document and I can click find next. It finds that for me, find next. All those words that I have typed here or any word that I have typed here. I'll be able to find it in my document once I do that. And as I click find next, it finds all those words or any word that I have typed in here in this find what box. Now, what I would like to do, I will click on replace to open that box. I would like to replace alternate powered vehicles, the ones that I have the lowercase for the A, P, and V. And I would like to replace that with a capitalized first letter on each word. So right here on the replace with the box, I will type uppercase A, alternate, and then uppercase P for powered, and then uppercase V for vehicles. So any word in this document that is typed as lowercase a, p, and v for alternate powered vehicles will be replaced with the words that are typed with an uppercase for a, p, and v for alternate powered vehicles. So if I would like to just replace one of them, I will click replace. But in our case here, I would like to replace all of them that has the lowercase with the uppercase. So I will click replace all. And once I do that, you can see Microsoft Word says here that all were done and we made seven replacements. So I will click OK. And now if I go back to find right here, I will delete that. I just wanted to make sure that all our words are typed with the uppercase. So I will find next and I can see it's uppercase. Find next. I see the same thing is uppercase there. Find next, all of them. Find next. I can see all of them now they are in uppercase. So I will close this and control home to go at the beginning of my document. So now I have shown you how to find and replace. The next thing that I would like to show you is how to add headings and uh, edit the styles for your headings. Now for MLA style, when using headings, the header should be in a different font style. For this research paper, we will have level 2 and level 3 headers. And for that, we will use heading 1 and heading 2. And so on your second page here, oh, you see these words here, YAPVs. Triple click on that to select that paragraph. And up here on your ribbon, on the home tab, come here to the styles group. And we'll apply heading 1 to that. And once I do that, you can see here the style has changed. Now we would like to modify this heading style so that if I use this style on any other part of this document, it will have the formatting of my choice. And to do that on your ribbon up here and on the home tab, on the styles group right here, click on the dialog launcher right there. And now we have our styles up here so i will click on manage styles right there and then that opens the manage styles dialog box so right here i would like to modify our heading one style and once we modify these changes will apply to heading one anytime we click at any other part of our document and we select heading one it will apply all those formatting that we are applying here so to edit that we'll click on the modify button right here Right here, I would like to change the formatting. So I will change that to Times New Roman. And then I will change that to 12. 
the font size and then I will change the color to black which is automatic right there and then the other thing that I would like to do is to change the paragraph formatting so I will come down here on this format button and I will click on that arrow and then I will select paragraph and I would like to change that pacing to zero so I will click on that and change that to zero and then the line spacing I would change that to double and I can see on my preview that looks good so I will click OK and right here I will also click OK and right here we see we have applied that formatting and we can see this icon right here which symbolizes that this is a heading style so I would like to use this same heading style on another part of this document and so I will scroll down and right here on my page number four, I see conclusion and I would like to apply the same formatting that I used for heading one. I would like to apply that same formatting here. So on this conclusion, if I triple click to select that and come up here on my styles and click heading one, I can see now that same formatting that I have applied on this other part of my heading right here, it has applied here. So if at any time I would like to make changes on this heading one, I can do that and still I have my styles dialog box open here. I will click on manage styles there and I can see right here it's heading one. So I'll come up here to my manage styles dialog box and I would like to modify that. So I will click on the modify button again and I would like to change this to small caps. So I will click on the format button right here and I will click on font and then right here on the font dialog box I will click the small caps to change that to small caps and then I will click OK and again I will click OK and then I will click OK and now you see that has formatted. Everything that I have on heading one has formatted to small caps and if I scroll down for the part we have conclusion you can see the same thing that has formatted to small caps. Now for your research paper, if you have level two headers, the paragraph after level two header will align to the left with no first line indentation. And so right here where we have our level two header, the paragraph below that, the one that starts with us, I will bring my cursor right before the word us and I will backspace that to remove the first line indentation. And then I'll scroll up here on the other level two header, the paragraph right below that, the one that starts with the word benefits. I'm bringing my cursor just right before the word benefits and I'm backspacing that to remove the first line indentation and align to the left. So now the next thing that I would like to do is to apply a level three header. And for our level three header, we will apply heading two style. So I will carefully select benefits to manufacturers. And I can come up here since I have my styles dialog box open. And as I hover there, you can see the different formatting. So I will click that and then I will modify this style. So I will click manage styles. Right here, I will click on modify button. I will change that to Times New Roman. I will change that to 12 and I will change the color to black and I will open the format button. I'll click on that. I will click on font and I need to make sure everything is correct there, but I'll change that to italic. So I'll click on that. Click OK. Again, I'm clicking on the format button, select paragraph, and I want to make sure that my spacing is at zero. So I will change that to zero. I will change my line spacing to double and I will click OK and click OK there. And I will click OK there. And I can see my heading to style now is formatted to the styles that I would like it to be formatted to. So I will apply this same heading to to benefits to consumers which is on the third page so right here on the third page just the first paragraph on your third page bring your cursor just right before the word benefit backspace that to remove the first line indentation 
and then carefully select benefits to consumers and then from here come up here and uh, on your styles click on heading 2 and that applies the same formatting for heading 2 that we just uh, modified and then I'm gonna scroll down and on my last paragraph on page 3 right before the word growth bring your cursor right there and click there and then remove the first line indentation and then carefully select growth again come up here to your styles and click on heading 2 and that applies heading 2 with all the same formatting that we have uh, modified on our heading style and now you can see we have differentiated all our levels of headers. You can see right here on page one, our title, which is our level one header, is different from level two header, which we have on as heading one. We have two different formats for these two levels of heading. And also for the third level, level three, which is here, we have that as heading two, and we have that here as heading two. And uh, this other one is right here. We all have different formatting for all those three different types of headers. And you can also see here for level three headers, the paragraph continues directly after the header. So now we are done with the heading styles. The next thing that we will do is to add a footnote. And first, let's close the styles drop down menu right here. And now to add our footnote here on your first page on the first paragraph bring your cursor right after the word vehicles and click there and then on your ribbon come to the references tab and then right here on the footnotes group you see the footnote button right there and you also see the keyboard shortcut to open that alt control f so press the insert footnote button right there and that opens our footnote right down here and we will type to explain what alternate powered vehicles are now from our notes uh, we know that footnotes are used for explanatory notes and here on our footnote we will write what an alternate powered vehicle is and we will type alternate powered vehicle is a motor vehicle that runs on alternate fuel other than petrol or diesel and we also give examples of that and as I type APV here, you will see uh, autocorrect will correct that for me to alternate powered vehicles. So watch here as I type APV, APV space, and you see the autocorrect feature has corrected that to alternate powered vehicles. And I will type our motor vehicles. Now we have our footnote typed there and we would like to edit our footnote and make this double spaced too. So in the way we will do that, I will select on this paragraph mark right there. And from my mini toolbar, I can select paragraph button right there for the paragraph settings. And then I have my paragraph dialog box open and I will click on double for the line spacing and click OK. And I can see that now has been formatted to double spacing too. So now we are done with uh, adding the footnotes. So the next thing that we will do now on our research paper is to add our citations. So I will use the keyboard shortcut control home to come at the beginning of my document. And now I will start adding my citations. And you can see on your word document, there are some words that I have in parentheses. Every place that I have those words in parentheses, that's where we will insert our citations. And so to insert our first citation, we will start here on the first page and on line six of the first paragraph, bring your cursor just before the words in parentheses and then use the delete key to delete all those words in parentheses. And then come up here on your ribbon, on the references tab and on the citations and bibliography group, click on the insert citation button arrow and then click to select add new source and here since our source is a website we will leave the type of source as a website and then we will come down here to the outer field and we will include the outer field so i will click on the edit button right there and since this source is from a government website there's no particular author so i will just type here u.s department of energy 
and click OK. And then I'll come to the next field, which is name of web page. And I will type here the name of this web page. And I will click tab to go to the year field. Now, if the website does not have the year it was published, it is okay to leave this field blank. So I will tab to go to the year access. And for the date accessed, this is optional, but it's a good practice to include this because the online works can be removed or it can be changed. So I will type in here the year that I accessed this website when I was doing the research for this paper, which was last year, 2021, and the month was April. And then since this is an online source, when possible, it is good to include the URL address. But when including the URL address, you can omit the HTTPS. And why we would include the URL address is because... Whoever is reading your paper might want to learn more about uh, the information that you have included in your research paper. And so with including the URL address, they can go to that address and get more information from there. So I will check the box, show all bibliography fields, and I will scroll down to the URL field. And I have that there. And I will copy the URL address from the start file and paste that here. And now I can click OK. And there you see we have inserted our first citation right there. Now if I come up here to manage sources, you can see we have that source on the master list. And we also have that source on the current list, which is the current paper that we are writing right now. So I will close that. And I will remember to add a full stop after the citation. And now I'll scroll down to the second uh, parenthesis where we have to add our second citation. And again, I will use the delete key to delete that citation. And I will delete that so that I can add the citation. And again, I will come to the insert citation button and click that arrow. And you see right here, we already have that source that we just included in our paper. So I will click add new source. And again, this is a website, so I will leave the types of source as a website. And I will click edit to add the author. Again, this is a U.S. government website, so I will type U.S. Uh, Department of Energy. I will click OK, and I will type the name of the web page. And I will tab to the year field, so I will leave that blank. So I will tab to type the year accessed. Again, this was 2021, and the month was April. And then I will check the box to show all bibliography fields. And on the URL field, I will copy the address from the start file. And I will paste that there. And I will click OK. And right there, we have our citation added. So the next citation, it's still on the same page. And we have it there, Breta et al. 2020. So I will leave it as that, but I would like to add this source to our sources. So to do that, I have to add that as a citation so that when we add our work cited list, that will be included in our list. So I will add the citation here and then I will delete it and leave it the way it is right here. So I will bring my cursor just right after the parentheses. And I will come to the insert citation button arrow right there and click that. Add new source. And then it's still a website. I will edit to type the authors. And I will start with the first author in the first name. And I will click add. And then I'll type the second author. And I will click add. And then I'll add the third author. And add, and then the fourth author, and then add, and then I'll add the last author, and then I'll click OK. And now you can see we have the list of authors there. Now I will add here the name of the web page, and then tab to include the year this was published. In the month was September. And the day was on the third. And then again, the year accessed was 2021. And the month was April. I will check this box to show all bibliography fields. And I will get the URL address and uh, copy and paste that over here. 
Control V and I will click OK. And right here I see I have misspelled one of the names of the others. So I can be able to edit that. So I will click inside that citation and I can see this arrow with the citation options. I will click on that arrow and I will click edit source and it opens for me the edit source dialog box and I would like to edit the other's name that I have misspelled. So I will add an R after E for Hackett and then for Hensley I will change the lowercase h to uppercase h and now that looks good so I will click OK and you can see I get a screen tip here this source exists in your master list and current document do you want to update both lists with these changes and I will click OK so these changes will apply on the master list and on this current list so I will click OK and I can see here the spelling has changed so since I don't want this citation here I will backspace to remove that I already have my citation here so I will leave that one because I have more than three others and if a source has three or more others we just use the first author's last name followed by etl and etl means and others and so for us we just type brighter etl meaning brighter and others so that's okay I will leave that citation that way and I will scroll up to the second page and I can see I have another citation here to add. So I will backspace to delete that and add our citation there. And then I'll come to the insert citation button right there. And I will click add new source. And this time this is not a website. This is a book source. So I will select book section. And I will click edit to add the others. So I will type the author's last name here and click add to add the second author and then I'll click OK. I have both authors there and I will include the title of the book. I don't have to type the book author right there again because I have them listed up here. I don't have to type the book title because I have the book title right there. So I will include the year this was published and then the publisher's name. Another thing which is good to include in, in the title is the edition of the book. And our edition for this book was 16th edition. So I will type there 16th edition and I will click OK. And right there you can see we have added our citation. So I'll scroll down to see which one is our next citation. So right there we need to update this citation. So I will just select that and delete that. And then I will come up here to our citation button. I will click on that arrow. And since we already cited this, I will just click on that citation there for the book. And you can see we have added our citation there. So I'll scroll down for the next citation. And I'm still on the second page. And on the paragraphs that starts with benefits to manufacturers, I can see I have some citations here that I need to add. I will start with the first one in parentheses and I will delete that so I can add the citation. And again, I'll come to the citation button right here and insert the citation. Add new source. Since this is a website, I will change from book section to website. And then this is a government website, so I will click edit and type here US Department of Energy. And click OK. And then I will include the name of the web page. Again, I don't have the year that was published, so I will leave that blank. The year that was accessed is 2021. In the month was April and now we'll need to add the URL address so I will check that box show all bibliography fields and I will scroll down to the URL fields I will copy from my start file and paste the URL address here and I will click OK and I have my citation added there so this is the same citation for the second uh, parenthesis that we have here so I will delete that and make sure not to delete the comma after the parentheses. And then I'll come to the insert citation right there and I will click to add that citation there. And then I'll scroll down to see if I have another one on this page and I can see I have another one here. And this uh, parenthesis is just right after 
vehicles by 2030 and I will delete that here 2021 and I will add our citation so I'll come up here to insert citation add new source our type of source is a website so I will leave it at that and then I will click edit to add the author and I will add here the last name of the author and then the first name and then the middle initial which is optional and then I click OK. The name of the web page, the year that was published, the month, and the day. And then the year that was accessed. Again, it's 2021, April. And then I will check the box to show all bibliography fields. I will copy this from our start file and paste that there. And then I'll click OK. And have our citation added there. So I'll scroll to the third page. And I can see right here we have the citation, but this is from the book. So we already added this to our list. I will just delete that carefully. I will come up here to insert citation button. Click that arrow. And again, since we already have this on our list, I will click uh, the citation that we have for the book right there. And that inserts the citation there. And again, remember to put the period or the full stop after the citation. So I will scroll down and I can see we have another citation here and on this one again we already added this to our list so I will delete that and get that from our list and insert that there. Click to add that citation there and again this other one is the same source so I will just carefully delete that, delete the parentheses, add a space. And then come to our list and add that citation there. And I can see it's the same one for this paragraph too. So this paragraph has three citations, but it's from the same source. I'm carefully deleting that space and delete that parenthesis again and uh, add that citation from our list. And then I'll scroll down. And on this other second paragraph right here, the paragraph that starts with even though there are advantages, on the last sentence here, I can see another parenthesis and I will delete that. And then I will add our citation from the list. And now I can go to the fourth page and see if we have citations that we need to add there. And I see here we have a new citation that we need to add. So I will delete that and I will come to our insert citation button. And this is a new source. So I will add new source and it's from our website. So I will just add the author. I will click on the edit button and type the author right there. And then I'll include the name of the web page. Again, if the year this was published is not included in the website, you don't have to include it. But I will add the year I accessed this and then I will check the box to show all bibliography fields and I will paste my URL address here and I will click OK. Now scroll down to see if I have any other citation that I need to add on our paper. I don't see another one on that page so I'll go down to the last page right here. I can see we have the citation from the book. And so I will just delete that and add from our list. And remember to add a full stop and a space. And then I see I have another citation here. But since I have the citation as an in-text citation, I will just add the citation to our list and then I'll delete it from our paper. So I'll come up here and add a new source. And again, this is a website, so I will just add the author here. And the name of the web page. The year this was published. The month. And the date. And then I'll also include the year I accessed that. In the month. And then I'll check the box to show all bibliography fields. Uh, and again, I'll paste my address here. And I'll click OK. 
And now again, I have to remember to delete that because I don't need that there. I just wanted to add that to our list. So with that, I have added all our sources to our master list and to our current list for this page. I'm scrolling up to make sure that I didn't miss anything. If I come up here to manage sources, you can see we have all the list on the master list and we also have that list in our current list. So if we make any changes to our list, it will also apply to our current list right here and also to our master list right here. So I will close this because I would like now to add a bibliography page and I will go to the end of my paper, control end to go to the end. And right here, I would like to add a new page because my work cited list should be on a new page. And I have that bibliography list right here. So as we were creating our citations, the bibliography was also creating a list to add after we finish uh, writing our paper as our work cited list. So to add a new page, I will use the keyboard shortcut, control enter. And now we have our new page right here. We need to make sure that our formatting has carried forward. So I will right click and click on paragraph. And I want to make sure it's double. I don't want the indentation. So I will remove the first line indentation and put zero. And then I will click OK. I want also to make sure that our margins are still set at one. So Alt P S P. And I can see that's okay. It's still set as one. I'll click okay. I also need to make sure that uh, the font size is 12 and the style is Times New Roman. So that's okay. Now I can come up here to my ribbon on my references tab and I can click on the bibliography button right there. Click on that arrow and then I will select work cited. And you can see we have added our works cited list right there. Now for the works cited title, this should be centered. So I will click anywhere in the works cited and then I will use the keyboard shortcut control E and I have centered that. So the other thing that I see didn't uh, carry on forward on this works cited list is the paragraph spacing. I would like the paragraph spacing to be the same as that in my paper. And so I will have to edit that. I also see here on my work cited list, uh, the double spacing didn't apply. And so I will select all that and right click that. And then I will click on paragraph. And then I will change my spacing to zero and the line spacing to double. And now I can click OK. Now I can see all my formatting is matching with that of my paper, which is what I want. So now if you would like to update your citations and bibliography, it's possible to do that. If you add any other citation here, or if you make any changes to your citations on your paper, and then you come up here and click update citations and bibliography that will update your list. So and to show you how to do that, I will come up here to my, I will come back here to my paper and I will scroll up here on the third page, on the first line of the third page, I would like to edit this. So what I will do, I will, remove this citation and add another citation on this uh, part here. So I will remove that. And uh, before I remove that, I want to show you if at any time you want to change your citation to text, you can do that. So if I click on my citation there and I click on that arrow, I can see right here I do have the option of converting the citation to static text. So if I don't want this to show as a citation, I can click on that and it will convert to a static text. I can also update my citations and bibliography page from here. But uh, I'm interested in that, so I'm going to click on that. And I can see now that has changed to a text. 
So I will delete this and I will add a citation here. So I'll come up here and add a new citation, add new source. And this is a book, so I will change that to book section. And I will add the other. I will add the title of the book. And then uh, this time I will include the page number right here. So I'll type page 29 and then add the publisher and click OK. Right here, I see I have the name of the author and the title of the book on my citation. So if I would like to update that, I can do that. And before we do that, I want to scroll down to the citation list. And right here, I would like you to notice that we only have that one name here for this author, Datas Recant M. We only have it one time here. So I want you to notice that once we update our works cited list, this will appear twice because I've added this as a new citation. And I will show you that once we come to update here. But before we do that, I want to go back up here and I want to show you how to edit a citation. So I will click on that arrow right there. And this time I'm clicking edit citation. And right here, I want to suppress the title of the book as I do not want the title to show here on my citation. So to suppress, I will make sure I check that box. And I also want to add page number to my citation. So on that box or on that page field there, I will type 29 and then I will click OK. And once I do that, you can see on my citation here now, I do have the others and I have the page number. Now we'll scroll back down to our work cited page. And right here now, I would like to update our citations and bibliography. And to update that, I will click on this uh, button right here, update citations and bibliography. And once I update that, you can see I do have now here two others with the same name right there. And it's because I added this as a new source and I also included the page number for this one. So that's the way you update your citations. And that's the way also you edit your citations if you need to do that. I also see, and you can also notice here after we added our citations, our paragraph spacing have changed. So we need to update that too. So I'm selecting everything there and then right click paragraph and then I'm changing that to zero and the line spacing to double. I'm not changing anything there. So I'll just click OK. And now I can see my spacing now is back to double. As I told you in MLA style, the footer is not required, but you can see for us, we added our footer here, our page numbers. And uh, it's coming in handy for us because right here we can see we have six pages and I can see on every page that I am in, I'm in what page of what page. So I will use the keyboard shortcut to go to the beginning of my research paper, control home. Right here, I see I have only two spell checks to do. I can either decide to just check word by word for those two. Or I can decide to use the editor F7 to do my spell check. Right here, I can see I have two corrections to do. So I will click on that and I will accept the suggestions right there. And then on this other one here, I'll accept that. And I can see I have five refinements to do. So I will click to check that. So no suggestions. So I will ignore that. I will ignore that. And I will ignore that. So I ignored all that and I can see my spell check is now complete. So I will just click OK and I will close the editor. Now, before I end this video, there are some few things that I would like to show you. If you would like to print your research paper, you can do that and you can also print some pages instead of printing all these pages. So to print, we use the keyboard shortcut Control P. And right here, if you were to print all the pages, you can just click here on the print. If you were to print uh, only a few pages, you can come here to pages and you can just type the number of page that you would like to print. So for example, if only you would like to print page two and then comma page four and then page six. So that will only print for you pages two, four and six. 
I'll backspace that. Another thing, if you would like to print on both sides, you can do that. If you want to print on one side, you can also do that. You click on that arrow and you change that to print on one side. If you also want to change the orientation, you can change the orientation from here. And another thing, if you only want to print the page that you are currently in, so for example, if I use this arrow right down here, and I can go to the next page right there, and you can see as I use this arrow, I'm going to the next page. So for example, you only want to print this current page. You can do that. You can come up here on the settings, and instead of uh, having the print all pages uh, selected, you can click on that arrow and you can select just print current page. And that will only print just the current page. Now you can see our formatting looks good. It's all matching on all our paper, whether it's our wax cited list, our paper right there, our formatting is matching, the double space is matching for all the entire paper and it's all looking good. So I will escape because I do not want to print that. So the other thing that I would like to show you, if on your research paper you do not want your name and the page number showing on the first page, it's possible to do that. So I'm coming up here on my header and I will double click up there and I can come up here on my options group on my header and footer tab and I will check that box, different first page. And once I do that, you can see I do not show the name here and I do not show the page number two. So if I scroll down on the footer here of the first page, I do not show the page numbers down here. So that's the way you do if you do not want to include the name in the page number on the first page. I will escape that. And now that was a lot of things that we have learned in this video, which are good skills for you to have when you're doing your English classes or if at any time you are to write a research paper in any of your classes. And so in this video, we have learned how to write a research paper in MLA style. We learned how to insert a header and a footer, how to add first line indents, how to find and replace text in your document, how to apply and edit heading styles, how to insert and edit citations, and also to manage sources. We also learned how to insert the bibliography and how to update your bibliography page. We also use the autocorrect feature in Word and we saw how that works. And actually, if you would like to use the autocorrect feature for your name, you can do that. Let me show you one last thing how to do that. So from our first and last name here, I will type an initial of a name here. And once I add that in the autocorrect feature and come back and uh, type that initial here, it'll update the name here. So I'll go to file. And then options again and then uh, proofing autocorrect options and I will type VD and I will replace that with VV done and I will click add now I'll click OK and OK and then I'll come back here to my research paper and right here I've selected the first name and last name and then I will type VD in space and that replaces with the name that I have to type there. So you can use that for your name. Anytime you have to type your name, you just have your initials typed and it will replace that with your name. So that was a lot of fun that we had in this video. But one thing I see here, I'm not showing my non-printing characters. This is a mistake I have done that I do not want you to do. And if I press Control and, and go to the last page here, how I got from this page, page five of six, to the work cited page, I'm not sure how I did that. So I will be able to see that by turning the non-printing characters on. And so I will control home and go to the first page. And here, when I'm on the first page, I will turn on my non-printing characters because I would like to see from my first page if I do have any extra spaces. So control shift asterisk. And I see right here on the name up here on this first paragraph, I do have an extra space. So I will bring my cursor right there at the end of the name and I will backspace to remove that extra space. And now I will control and to go to my last page right here 
and i see on this last page here i also do have an extra paragraph i will buff space to remove that and now i see how i got to my work cited page is because i inserted a page break right here so please when you're working on a word document always make sure that your non-printing characters are turned on and so this was a lot of fun and a lot of skills that we have learned and one one last thing that i would like to show you so remember when we came to our references tab right here and opened the manage sources right here we have a master list and we also have a current list now we'll close this and if i open a new word document so control n to open a new word document so right here if i come to my references tab and then uh, click manage sources i see here on my source manager i do have the master list of the citation sources that we have but i do not have anything on the current list so all these sources that i have on my master list if i would like to use them on this new document i can do that by just clicking on that uh citation that i would like and i would copy that and it will appear on the current list so i will close that and i will close this because i don't need the new document alt f4 to close this and now on my research paper i will control home to go to the beginning and i will save this control s to save that and now we have come to the end of our video number eight research paper and all these files again they will be provided to you and you can uh, get them from our people website so thank you and i will see you in our next video